Assalamualaikum warahmatullah, dear viewers, welcome back. I'm Misha Kuddin, and we were talking about education. And you know, I'm sure that there are a lot of things new to you as well. You can phone us and share your own experience. Um, we'll be talking to our Kita again regarding, you know, a um, lot of news are coming out nowadays in, in different, different places. A lot of young people have been bullied in schools and they have taken a wrong decision, young people. Some of them killed themselves and some of them, you know, they lost the mandate, you know, they're very isolated. Do, do you face any of these things? Uh, unfortunately, yes. You know, it's probably been lying if I said I didn't. Uh, especially in year nine, uh, I think that's when um, you get a little bit more understanding about yourself and you're starting to be slightly more aware that in some way you are different. You know, you always start with yourself. You know, and my personal experience again was verbally, thank God, you know, that I uh, had a group of uh, fairly older people come up to me and said, Oh, you don't belong here. And really? Yeah, yeah it, was, uh, it was very harsh and uh, it was very, um, very scary, of course. And that did affected my personal thinking that I start, started to skipping school, you know. And uh, thank God that my form tutor at the time was passionate and he noticed my uh, falling attendance and uh, gave, again, since my parents um, couldn't speak proper English and couldn't understand English. Where do you used to go? Do you stay at home or you used to bunk off? Uh, I would just pretend to be ill. Oh. You know, yeah, so in a way that due to my parents' slight discipline on my part, I didn't mix in with the wrong crowd. So I was just pretending to be sick in the morning to have, you know, be dizzy and tell my mum, oh, I can't make it to school. So yeah, it was, then um, yeah, my form to call my uncle. Yeah, and my uncle literally, uh, trying to find out the reason why. And looking back, it just seemed really stupid, you know, to not to go to, talk, uh, to, go to school and maybe talk to my friends about it. Because I felt alone, but in reality, I wasn't, because I had my form tutor there. And I had my uncle, you know, obviously I had my parents, you know, I could have talked to them, but I didn't. And I regret, regretted that. How old were you then, sir? Uh, year nine, uh, maybe 15. 15. Yeah, 15. Was it 15? 14, 15. Yeah, 14, 14 15. 15. Yeah. So, again, very impressionable age, and I think that's when you're starting to develop a bit of a, a socializing skills that you bring mm -hmm. into your adulthood. Mm -hmm. So, when that happens during that age, it can affect your, your adult life later on. And trust me, it did affected me and uh, it's due to my uh, my martial art experience that uh, changed my confidence slightly you know to be a little bit more bold that's great is that when you decided to learn martial arts or uh, no no uh, finance is never the reason to to, 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 to to do anything I never considered to try to okay you know the reason why I started learning martial art was a completely different reason okay. you know but um Again, uh, being the only child did affect me because uh, no one, I believed that I, n I had no one to talk to. But looking back, I did have many people to. You know, to talk thank to. you for sharing that. You know, it's really your personal, but um, I'm sure millions of people are watching, they will learn from that, honestly. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, Not many right. people do that. Alison, can I ask you um, what are the symptoms when people get bullied or, you know, been, uh, somehow been, uh, you know, moved away from the main attentions. Why are the symptom parents can't look into and say, look, something is wrong? I mean, one thing, like Kit said, could be that they decide they don't want to go to school. And Kit was just saying that they would begin to say, oh, I've got a tummy ache, I've got, I feel I don't want to go to school, or, and they may not actually say it's because people are bullying me. It may just be that they're feeling different. Another thing could be that they, um, isolate themselves within school. They don't want to communicate much in playgrounds. 
they just sit by themselves and they don't really talk to other children because they're afraid that if they do talk to other children they might get mm. cool names. Another thing could be that they become more aggressive, they become angrier, but they come home from school and they may be angry but they don't say what's been happening. But bullying can happen anyway, it can happen in the workplace, it can happen in, in the street, it can happen in the home, you can have six children in a family and one of them is mm. the one who's bullied by the other five. And parents don't always see what's happening and that, oh, they're the one who's the clumsy one or they're the ones who are never going to amount to much. And some children get ideas about themselves from what people say to them. And it could be their parents saying it, it could be people in the street saying it to them, or it could be people in their school saying it to them. So, you know, when we see those um, symptoms, <coughs> especially parents, I mean, we need to be really alarmed. Something has gone wrong here. You can't have every morning you saying, I'm sick, I don't want to go. Something mm -hmm. is gone beyond. And then I think we have to be very, very careful. Then we need to talk to teachers, especially, and other people. And in UK, you know, amazingly, I met a lot of, lot of amazing teachers. They, they, they would look into it. They are really, really mm -hmm. good teachers. Of course, not all the same, but they are very, really good teachers. They've been trained to know if that person is acting that level. So that's, that's the beauty of uh, the UK education. And many uh, schools now have learning mentors who are there, who've got some training in counselling, they've got training in how to work with children to help them to understand each other's perspectives. In our school we have two learning mentors and they are there to talk to children about their feelings and you, talk do, about do how to negotiate things. Do you get a lot of complaints from, you, uh, from the young people in, in school? It depends or on the they, school. Or they want to say it. You just some children will say that people are calling me names because I'm different. Okay. Other children will say they're picking on me. Other people will say they're bullies. But it's actually trying to understand what do they mean by bully? Mm. What do they mean by being picked on? Is it, are we afraid of difference? Are we afraid of finding out about one another's lives? And I think it's really important that we encourage children to get to know one another and get to become friends with people who are different to themselves, mm. not just people who are the same as them, and say, well, one of the things our learning mentor might do is say, when that person says, to that, when that person says that to you, how do you think, how do you feel? And they may say that in front of the bully and the person who's experienced name-calling. And then they may say to the person, well, did you want them to feel like that? How did you want, you know, and it's actually thinking, how do you think they, you could say things to make them feel better? So it's different things that we can say, but it's also saying there are lots of differences in the world. Why don't we just yeah, find ways it. of accepting those things that are different about each other, but find and encourage people to find things that are the same as well and so they can become friends as well. Brilliant. Carmen, can I come to you? If, if you ever get bullied, imagine if you get bullied and stuff, would you go and tell whom? Would you go and tell your mum and dad or whoever's... You mean now or back then when I was at home? Imagine at now, school? would you? I'd like to think I would. Mm -hmm. I'd like to think I would. It, it'd be difficult to say how, because I don't know, I think victims feel like a sort of shame mm, from being bullied, really. I think it's a good idea to tell people that you trust, that you are being bullied, and if there's anything they can implement. Um, a lot of the time, people don't know that they're being bullied, though. So. So it has to be someone you trust, someone would not bully you again. Like, oh, you've been like that, what are you talking about? You know, bullying, bully again. <coughs> and if, if you have that feel, so you, you, would, you could go and um, tell, isn't it? That's, it has to be somebody going home and finding that right person. And yeah, I from. think it is important to confine in someone. There's always a solution to things. Of course, of course. Um, did you ever get bullied in your school? When you, uh, yes, did you have I did. difficulties? Uh, yes, I did, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't cyberbullying, which is a whole different problem now. Um, when I went to secondary school at that time, there weren't many Asian people, it was mostly Caucasian people. So I feel like I got picked on from being Asian because they used to pick that out, that I was Chinese. And then afterwards, I just threw myself into my studies and I did well at school and I got picked on for doing well at school too. So people tried to get me into trouble with that. I didn't tell my family and I wish I did because maybe they could have stepped in and helped me a little bit. Have you spoke to anyone, your teachers, your friends? Or no, I didn't tell anyone no, about yeah. it and maybe that's a big problem, maybe I really should have. 
they wouldn't have gone on for so long. Um, like Kit, there was times when I didn't go to school because I, I couldn't face seeing these people. How was your education? Did that affect your um, inner confidence? It made me less confident as a person, but it made me throw myself into my studies because I felt like if I didn't have enough friends, then at least I still had my grades to fall back on. So I did quite well in school. I stopped eating lunch. I hung out at library at lunchtime, made friends with a librarian instead. Okay, so they pushed you to your better then. <laughs> they did in a strange way. Yeah. When you, you know when we say, I'm talking about young age, just to ex share the experience. When we say uh, I lost my confidence, how long would that last? Would that be a few days, a few months? How? I think if it's not addressed, it can last until adulthood, really. Really? Yes. Wow. So if someone tells you that you know, you're not good enough, that part of you might yeah. believe that. You know, it's, it is. I, I, myself, actually, what happens is um, I have a kid, 14 years old. Um, the, the ones are going bigger, that stuff. So I'll pick him up and from the school, and I'll try to find out what happened in the school day. So almost like um, I'm not judgmental at all. Let him say anything. So when he comes to the car, he will say, I'm not feeling good, Dad, today. Please, uh, my, my language will be quite bad today. Really? Why? <laughs> so I know it's something happened today. All right, go ahead. Don't worry. And he will just start and he will, he will swear and he will say that. And after, the thing, after he's done all that, I said, what happened? Tell me now. And then he will say, this, this, this happened. I said, that could be a joke. Your friend actually joked with you. He said, you can't play. Actually, you can't play. I played with you football. Why do you say that? I said, it's, that's, not a, that's not bullying. This is something you couldn't play. He just said it. Don't say he's bullying. It's just like he's been honest with you. That's why he's your friend. So we have to define what, what the person said and why he said it. And, and then if that goes to another level, of course. But I think, you know, my wife will say, what are you doing? You're letting him speak to you, you know, a lot of swear words in the car and let him do it. I said, no, let him bring it out. If I stop him, he's not going to tell me the story. So let him bring him out and then I probably pick up something that wasn't right. So, yeah, I had to t took a different way, but yeah, he worked for me. He worked for me. Alison, um, you know, in your, um, as a judge or in a court, do you face a lot of young people are going there not with a good education or they've been messed up. Are you allowed to, say, just to give us an idea? I'm actually a magistrate, a lay oh. magistrate, so you don't get paid as a lay magistrate. Okay. I sit in court probably about 30 days a year. But I actually don't do youth court. I used to do youth court, but now I just do family court. Okay. And in the family court, there is often lots of people telling stories of domestic abuse um, and violence within the home having to do non-molestation orders against people who have been hitting their wives or have been arguing with their parents, that sort of thing. And so there are evidences of people who are bullied within the home. That could be a disaster, man. It could be a very... And the evidence now is that for a child who has witnessed domestic violence within their family, when they've seen their husband, the fathers hit their wives, or belittle. Domestic violence isn't just about hitting, mm. it's about belittling them, it's about keeping money away from them. Children from those families actually suffer, and often they do the underperform at school, and they often become bullies themselves, because they're following what they're seeing done at school, at home. That could be one of the worst things you can uh, witness, especially as a kid, mm -hmm. because you'll pick it up. Most of the yeah. time, those guys, what they see, he picks it, they pick it up. Kate, uh, can I ask you something yeah, about, I want to know your tradition of marriage in, in Hong Kong, man. Um, in modern days, there are a lot of divorces, a lot of uh, single, uh, single parents mm -hmm. and all that stuff. You know, it's like became a game to some people, not all of them, some people. So in Hong Kong and China, how do they get their marriage together? <coughs> well, in Hong Kong, it's slightly... Oh, what's your plan? What's my plan? <laughs> uh, let it, let it flow. <laughs> 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 to be honest, I, do, I don't really have a plan. I'm yeah. sure my parents would disagree, but, <laughs> but um, I think Hong Kong people are slightly more, now anyway, slightly more free in terms of uh, the perception in marriage and relationship. It's very similar to Britain. You know, there, there isn't any uh, arranged marriage. The parents couldn't, couldn't force, uh, force them to meet other people. But 
When you say now, what happened before? Did they have uh, a range and force? I think before it's slightly um, more traditional view because it was the, again, it is to do with generations and, and, and the slightly to do with information, you know, because now we have the internet, you know, Facebook and all that, so you can, you'll be able to communicate far wider mm. than before, whereas maybe before the internet, maybe 1992, uh, beyond, uh, before that, information is still very limited, so they, they might just listen to what the parents are saying, rather than talking to their friends abroad, you know, like in mm. England, and now, now I can talk to someone in America and say, hey, uh, got a girlfriend yet? Oh, no. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, no, I'm, I'm not really looking, but I met someone down at a club sometimes, you know, that kind of stuff. But they, they couldn't do that before. But traditionally, was it arranged for...? for uh, uh, not in Hong Kong. Okay. But, but they, they, the parents do try to uh, okay. set you up. Yeah, yeah, they try to yeah, find the right person. Mm -hmm. But now it's less forceful. And again, it's to do with the, uh, the, the information that they have from uh, other country, from their online friends. What's the divorce rate? I mean, is it not rate? I mean, what's the, is it more of a f to young people? It's quite high, in my opinion. I don't know the actual figure, okay. but from what I've heard from my friends. Does it frighten you? Like, oh my God, getting married, it might get, does it frighten uh, you? In do, a you way, do you get worried? Uh, I do, I do, because it's almost like you said, it's almost becoming like a game uh, in, in terms of, uh, you meet someone, you like them, then you maybe you just feel like getting yeah. married. You know, it's, it's that very wow. casual kind of perception. Same question to you. <laughs> um, if, if your parent chooses you, someone to you know, get to know, because I, I, don't, I don't think there is a force anymore. And, and, and it's, it's coming down a lot. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not force anymore. It's very uh, it used to be arranged in China, mm -hmm. but not anymore. Uh, now parents they do like to match make, I think, but in the end they do leave it up to you know, people to find the partners by themselves. They do nag though, quite a lot about getting married. Um, in China now, if you're over 27 and you're not married, they call you a leftover, which is really, really mean. <laughs> is, that <laughs> it, it, that is amazing. is that meant for the men and the women or is it for the both? Uh, mostly for the women, yeah. Because men can get married at any time, but they see you know, a woman, if she's over 27, she's not married, there must be something wrong with her. Wow. Surprise for me, because I never thought it would, would have, in, in China, Hong Kong, that they have the same issues as Asians have. Uh, I'm from Bangladesh, so we have, if the woman is, you know, uh, like the age you said, they'll think, oh, no, there's something wrong here, what's going on? You know, there'll be people behind your back and say, go, 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 get rid of her, or do this, da, 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 da. You know, it's, it's education, man. If you do good education, if it, you, you're going to go to that age easily. Mm. You know, it's, n it's not uh, beyond your thinking. If you're doing education, you're doing a PhD, you're doing this, you're going to be a doctor, you will reach that age. And we have a lot now reach that age, actually. And it's, it's, yeah, it's not easy finding the right person for that. But I think it's, not, it's another thing. We have a culture issue. Like if you're old, you get issue like, oh, what happened to her? It's so sad. Alison, yes, would you like to? I was going to say, not many people talk about what makes a good marriage. And there are, just like earlier today, we were talking about the fact that in England now there are parenting courses to help parents become stronger, happier parents. There are now, the church I go to, St Paul Shadwell, they have a marriage course which talks about what makes a marriage good. Is it communication? Is it forgiveness? Is it having a date night every week? What do you do to make sure that that person feels special? How do you find that you're going in the same direction in life? And this year I'll have been married 30 years. Wow. In September. Bless you. Congratulations. This is my 30th year of marriage. Congratulations. But we were, we met because we both had Christian faith. We both were going in the same direction, but also we were both passionate about supporting others in our community. And so it was a coming together of minds, but it also takes time to work on it. So it's reminding ourselves that we need time to communicate, remind time to do things together, to, we're very different. My husband's very quiet. He's an engineer. He says that my job always involves people. His but Alison, do you feel, do you feel um, 
I'm sure you'll feel upset when you see young people are not taking marriage as seriously. And they are, majority of them in the UK, they don't want to get married at all because of the divorce and that and uh, those kind of stuff. As a religious person, do you feel sorry mm. for them or do you think um, as a religious leaders we haven't done the job well? I think that there has not been enough teaching in churches, in mosques, in Jewish synagogues or whatever about the importance of being committed to one person. There's also not been enough encouragement about communication mm. and about saying that it is actually best for... I'm not saying it's wrong to get divorced, that happens, but there's actually a lot more... If people put a lot more effort into their marriages, if they actually showed their partner that they appreciated them, that they enjoyed being with them, that they were prepared to put mistakes behind them, then more people would stay together. And I think there is a, a danger that we've not encouraged marriage. In the same Do you way. think we, we don't have any role model anymore, like a longer marriage, 80 years, 90 years, 50 years? We don't have that tradition anymore that people are looking into a, a film stars, a movie stars, that they just, for them it's a different is, story. I think so. that is that thing. And also relationships are shorter term. As you were saying, the internet makes things really quick. Mm. You can have a relationship with someone for two or three years and then break up. And um, I wouldn't want my four children to have arranged marriages in any way. But I would like them to find someone who would give them encouragement, enjoy being with them, and work together on building a family. And I think that would be really important. I think that's where instant relationships don't always work. But when you put time into it, it can. And I can think, I, I have friends who've got arranged marriages and their marriages are very loving. Yeah. And very committed. It, I think it could be both mm. ways. You, can, you find someone for yourself, it's brilliant. Or someone can find someone for you. Also works, you know, mm. also works. Because it's just more like a, it's a partnership work, isn't it? You've got to give up and give and take, give and take. You're not going to have always rosy. That's not what you've expected from any relationship. You've got to give up and take. You'll have a good day and you'll have a bad day. So on the bad day, how you re react is, is the issue. Before we go for a break... I was just going to say that yeah. one example of you being a good parent is when you were saying about picking up your son from school and talking about your day. But that's actually, do we have time when our families come home to sit and talk? Sometimes we we'll say, oh, no, I'm just taking this phone call. I'm just going to do this. And what is more important? Is it spending time with people and listening? Or is it just doing the jobs we have to do? And and that's we just want to go for a break and come back, inshallah. Dear viewers, um, thank you for staying with us. We're just going to for a small break. Stay with us. Don't go far. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.